If you want to become a data engineer, you've been told to learn certain things. But in many cases, you don't actually need all of those things, and it's not what employers look for. You don't really need to know every single thing about data engineering and all sorts of tools to get a job. You actually only need a few key skills. In this video, I'm not just going to tell you what they are, but rather, we're going to take a look at real job listings together and see what companies actually look for, because that's the only thing that matters if you want to get a job. I'm going to use LinkedIn, Indeed, and perhaps even more places to do this to give you the best idea of the skills they look for. And because you guys have asked for it, I'm going to focus entirely on entry-level jobs or for those looking to get their first job in data engineering. So let's just get started. I'm going to start with LinkedIn and then get into some more interesting sites because I know a lot of you guys are familiar with LinkedIn and you know, like it's pretty obvious what to do on LinkedIn, but I still want to give you some tips and also show you how it actually looks like on LinkedIn because it is definitely one of the biggest and most important job searching websites. So this wouldn't be a good video if I just skipped LinkedIn. After this, I'm going to show you some other websites, both some small ones, but generally speaking, focusing on the big ones, because we're not going to look at some kind of specific niche website with shady job listings. We want to look at the sites where people actually look for jobs, and those sites are going to be the major ones. So as you can see right here, we're on LinkedIn. Now, the first thing that I would recommend you do anytime you get started looking for jobs on LinkedIn or on other sites is to take a look at the time. So as you can see here, we're able to see if the jobs are in the past month, the past week or the past 24 hours. And if you have selected any time, which is the basic thing, then you can basically find jobs that are months old. And as you can see here, this one, for example, two months ago. Now, they could be hiring. That's absolutely possible. But in many cases, all that it means is that they just haven't removed the job listing. And that is a problem because if you spend time looking at their job description, trying to send an application for this one, you know, filling in a cover letter, whatever you're doing, you'll waste a ton of time and they're not even going to look at your job listing. So it's just a huge time waster. That is why I definitely recommend that you put either, you know, past month or something like that, past week. It just depends. And as you can see, you are going to cut down the job listings significantly, but it's also going to save us a ton of time. Because imagine if you apply to basically 30,000 of the 80,000 jobs are, you know, not in the past month, which means that 30 out of 80 or 80,000 of these jobs may not even be relevant to you. They may not be hiring. They just might be basically a fraud. And if you're looking at this one, it's mainly going to select jobs that are quite relevant. As you can see, they're still picking them out because they know that this is a problem. But just save yourself some hassle and just put this. Now, we're also going to do something else. We're going to look at the experience level because, you know, we don't just want to look at the, for example, director level if we're looking for an entry level position. One thing I do want to say here, though, is that if you are looking for entry level here, for example, it doesn't mean that you're going to be shown all of the jobs that are entry level. As you can see here, there are 49,000 jobs available or more than 49,000. But if we look at this one, something strange, as you can see, 23,000, 13,000, this is not going to add up to 49,000. It's not near 49,000. And what this means is that many companies, they just haven't put the right uh, experience level, the right, you know, filter, which means that if you're just looking for these jobs, you're going to be missing jobs. So for example, we click here, we only get 13,000, but in reality, there are probably more jobs. You're not going to get all the jobs. Even if you select all of these jobs, let's see how many we get. We get 42,000. So there are a couple of thousand jobs that are never, you know, never they don't even have a tag. And that is actually a pretty significant part. Now, it might not sound like a lot, but the thing is that if you are looking for these jobs as a data engineer and you're able to find a couple of thousand jobs that other people that are using these ones don't find, then they can also have a lot more applicants or less applicants. Sorry, guys, you don't want to look for more applicants. For example, if this one over 200 applicants, let's say you find one that has 20 applicants. Well, this basically means that you have 10 times the chance of getting the job, assuming that, you know, all the other factors are the same. So just being able to find hidden job listings can save you a ton of time make you more eligible for the job and get a higher chance of actually, you know, landing the job. But now let's get into some job listings. So let's take a look at the entry level first. I think that's going to be the most useful for you guys. Uh, if you are more senior, it can still be helpful, but we're going to focus on the entry level jobs. So here we have a Rockstar Games. Now it seems to be in, uh, okay, this, these are just the pluses. We don't need to focus on them. The qualifications, that's going to be really interesting. So they want you to have some work experience in the data modeling, BI and machine learning and big data. They also have also some experience in specific systems, um, two years of experience with Azure. And as you can see, also SQL, of course, I mean, that's pretty expected. Python, real-time uh, or near-time machine learning pipelines, strong experience in massively parallel processing and columnar databases. So 
as a bit of the specific stuff, but the main thing that I think is interesting here is why do they require work, ex work experience? I mean, isn't this supposed to be an entry-level data engineering role, right? Well, not really, because what we're probably going to find if we take a look at more roles is that a lot of these will require experience. As you can see, you have experience, translating data requests, blah, blah. Let's, let's take a look at another one that's supposed to be entry level. Data engineer one, right? Experience. Let's take a look at something else. You know, let's just go over here. Okay, this one is not really relevant because this is wrong classified. That's also worth um, a wrong classification. That is also worth noticing that um, quite a few ones are going to be wrong just because people don't do their jobs when they're hiring. And that's uh, a really... Uh, a huge issue. I'm going to show you a way to also um, mitigate that a little bit. But as you can see here, adv advanced working with SQL knowledge, probably some experience. Yeah, they're kind of not as um, clear about, you know, specific years of work experience, but a lot of these guys are going to require some experience, four years of experience. And the reason is now, even for the entry level roles, usually data engineer is not just going to, you know, come from nowhere and just become a data engineer. You'll often require some experience in the field. And that doesn't mean that you have to be a data engineer, but it could be as a data analyst or, you know, data scientist coming from some part of the data science spectrum uh, before you get into data engineering, because you're going to do a lot of senior things. Something that I think is really interesting is that I haven't actually seen a lot of um, degrees yet. That is also, of course, going to help you a ton, but it seems to be a lot of focus on the experience. There's not so much about the degree itself. Um, this is Patreon, actually. That's pretty interesting. SQL and Python. Again, SQL, Python, R, um, specific things, dashboards, data pipelines, all that basic stuff. Um, yeah, let's take a look at another website. So this is going to be Glassdoor. If you're not familiar, it's basically a job website as well. A little bit more focusing on empowering the employees. I like Glassdoor for that reason, because when you fill in uh, or when you create an account, you're asked to fill in your salary and your company and that kind of stuff. And there are pros and cons to this. But what I do think is good is that their base salary estimates are pretty good, actually. They're you know, re reasonably good because they're actually using data from real people. So let's look at this one, for example. We can also get a review of the company. Company. And this is really helpful because people have actually, you know, reviewed the company. And if the company has like a one out of five stars, then don't even spend your time or waste your time applying to this one. This is pretty good. 3.9, you know, 66 would recommend, you know, it's pretty good for first job. Um, not the highest score, but it works. But again, we see an issue here. This is 30 days old. So now let's take a look at this one last month and we can actually remove the job listings that we don't need. That's going to save us a lot of time. For example, if I, if, if I would have just kept this, perhaps I would have spent some time applying to this one, this one, and this one. And I would have wasted three job applications to good companies. I mean, even Tesla is doing this. Perhaps they're actually hiring because this is a pretty specific role. But for most of the basic ones, if they haven't been able to fill a junior data engineer position in two months, then something's wrong and the company, they're not hiring or they're just, you know, not going through with the interviews or whatever. So be careful about that. I don't want you guys to waste some t a lot of time doing so. So the first thing, we're going to take a look at this one in Florida. Um, 95,000 estimate, the company 4.4, really good, 89% uh, approve, 86. You can also see some of the pros here, actually. Um, they seem to be good and some people don't like it, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so three ratings, uh, maybe not the best kind of data, but it seems to work pretty well. Now let's take a look at this, what they actually want from you. Design and develop databases, store procedures, triggers and functions following best practices, create ETL pipelines, uh, extract transform load, efficiently using Azure Data Factory to support data storage and processing, develop automated processes for loading, transforming and integrating data from multiple sources, monitor the health of databases and ETL pipelines, troubleshoot issues and recommend optimization for performance. Also collaborate execute data quality checks and find problems and build dashboards, trackers and reports as required by business needs. Now, that's all really interesting, but I'm not going to go through responsibilities for that many more job listings. I think the important thing is just like you can learn many things in your role, but do you meet the requirements? So let's take a look at that. You want proven experience with Azure Data Factory, knowledge of database architecture, design and development, Python, SQL, ETL processes. Um, strong problem solving skills, exceptional communication skills, which is really important as well. Not as important for data engineer, but you are also going to be spending a lot of time actually, you know, getting the data, finding out what data you need, finding out what's, what the requirements are, what you need to do with the data and so on. So you need to be able to communicate and uh, yeah, seems to be pretty good. This is, a pr this is actually a pretty good website. They don't really have as many job listings as for example, on LinkedIn, as you guys can see, they only have 2,500. 
these guys had 13,000, and this is actually for all levels. So if you were to select entry level, you would probably get quite a few, um, yeah, 31. But this, this this doesn't mean anything because many of them are incorrectly selected. As you can see, uh, 1,000 are actually missing a selection. So perhaps skip the filters if you're using this website. Now, let's take a look at the next one. So now we are on Indeed, and I'm going to select Data Analyst here and actually type in either remote or just United States in general. I think that's pretty good. And we're going to see what we're able to find. I'm just doing this with you guys. I'm not, you know, planning this. I'm just showing you how the job market really looks like and how it really works. Um, but now I actually forgot. We're going to look at Data Engineer. I'm so in the Data Analyst space right now. Let's take a look. Okay, so we can see First one we find, or second one, this is a data engineer position, Capital One, and they want a bachelor's degree. That's expected. Sometimes, I mean, there are, of course, people that are data engineers without a bachelor's, but it's going to be very helpful. And in many cases, companies are going to require one because you'll need some of the technical skills. And especially now with the competitive you know, marketplace, a bachelor's degree can actually help out a ton. But if you don't have one, of course, you're, you, don't, you don't have one. You can't just get a bachelor's in a year or something. So in, the, in most cases. So, you know, you have to play using your um, qualifications. And in this case, they prefer two years of experience um, in application development, Python, SQL, Scala, Java, um, two years of experience with public cloud, two years of experience with distributed data and computing tools, one year of experience on real-time data. So quite a lot of experience, as you can see, around one to two years to get this role. If you've been working as a data analyst or something, chances are that you're going to have quite a few of these ones, at least. You're going to fulfill perhaps this one. You're prob Maybe not the Java. You're probably going to fulfill um, some of these other ones. Uh, I guess I guess it depends on what, how you're doing it. Let's take a look at something else. So we have a data integration engineer. And some of these ones are going to have like a little bit of a different name. Sometimes you do similar stuff. Sometimes you do different things. It kind of depends on the company. A lot of these data roles overlap and you do different things as well. So bachelor's degree, three years of experience, SQL, no SQL, um, data modeling, data quality, um, cloud computing. That's very common for data engineering positions, either AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Microsoft Azure. Very common. So if you don't know cloud, it's definitely worth learning um, because a lot of data is in the cloud nowadays. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is definitely not a beginner one. We should actually go and select beginner. So on this website, you can also do like on LinkedIn or the other websites and select entry level. But again, not all of the jobs are going to be there. You're going to miss out on a, quite a few jobs, 6,000 and around 3K. 1400, 600. So you're going to miss out on a few jobs as well. Now let's take a look at the entry level ones and also select the, can we select this one as well? No. Okay. So entry level data engineer, they're going to require one to zero to one year of experience, bachelor's degree. And they're also specifically looking for a computer science degree, IT or related field. And it can also help, you know, there are many different fields, but just a quantitative field in general is going to be helpful. Cloud platforms, again, SQL cloud platforms, cloud technologies, really just two types of cloud I mentioned in you know four lines of uh, requirements so cloud can definitely help you get a job um python spark solid analytical and problem solving skills you know that makes a lot of sense all of these things are just kind of the things that we're seeing all again it's cloud it's some specific programming it's attention to detail sql um, perhaps some other tools as well, but it's going to depend. If you enjoy this video, feel free to subscribe. I recently checked and only about 10% of you guys are subscribed. So most of you guys are really missing out. Join us instead.